Welcome all, welcome back at I need help at C squared. In this example, we're going to talk about what's happened with the domain of and the range of a function, f of x I call it, when we have some transformation. And uh, if you watch my channel, probably you already recognize this transformation or, of course, in your classes. And let's take a look to A which says, hey, the function is uh, g of x, which is negative f of x. This negative f of x tells you nothing else than a reflection over the x-axis. I can put that here. Reflection over x-axis. That's the meaning, right? But now what's happened with the domain and the range of this function g of x when it is reflected over the x-axis. This negative here means a negative 1. The only thing that change is the range. That range you multiply by negative 1. So the domain of this function stay the same. It does not change. It is negative 16 to negative 8 like the original. However, the range you multiply by negative 1. So, in fact, we're going to get what? 4 and 15, right? So, I'm going to say here, multiply by, multiply by negative 1, the range kind of this is the rule we have for this transformation so the domain stays the same the range change let's go to the next one b down here which you notice is f of negative x so this is a reflection over what reflection over y-axis so now let's take a look what's happened here with the domain and the range of the function f of x if we have f of negative x. Uh, in this case, the domain change, and you're going to multiply this domain by negative 1. So the domain becomes... Uh, so if we multiply by negative 1, everything switch there, right? 8 and 16. And the range stay the same. So if you want to say like a rule here, we multiply the range by, um, I'm sorry, the domain by negative 1. Be sure you switch the order of those limits of that for that interval. And this is A and B where we have this reflection. Let's go to C and D. And now on C, what is the transformation for C? For C, we have moved the graph f of x three units, because we have that plus three, what? Left. Okay, so what's happened here with the domain and the range? And this one, I think it's a very simple one to see it, um, right? We move to the left. So the domain is going to be moved to the left. Uh, how many units? Three units. So the domain is going to be what? If I move these three units to the left, I'm going to subtract 3. Why do I get negative 19? I subtract 3 here. Why do I get negative 11? The range, on the other hand, stay the same. It doesn't change because we move just the graph left. We have a very similar thing if we move to the right. You add that number. But well, again, here, this one stay the same. Okay, so if you want a kind of a rule here, I will say 
Ah, subtract three for the domain. Or let me write it like that. Minus three plus D, right? Okay, that's kind of a rule that you want to do here. Of course, if it's the other way, f of x minus 3, you add a 3. Okay, now let's go to d, where we have f of x plus 3. That is nothing else than moved what? 3 units, because again we have that 3 up. So in this case, I think we know what needs to change. In this case, it's going to change the range, right? The range is the y, up or down, right? So the domain stayed the same. Negative 16. Negative A doesn't change. However, the range, you're going to have to add 3. Add 3 on those limits of the uh, range. So we have negative 15 plus 3, negative 12, and negative 4 plus 3, negative 1. So if you want to say plus 3, we're adding 3 because it's up, plus the range as a rule in this case, uh, that will be good. And this is for these cases, which I call them rigid transformation. All these four are rigid transformation. Reflection over x-axis, y-axis, move left, right, up, or down. Now, let's go to the last three, which are non-region transformation, and they are kind of tricky. Okay, so this we have two times f of x. If you look to that one, that's his stretch vertically. By a factor of two, if you if you uh, want to have uh, that. So what does it change here? What change here is the range. This range you see here, you need to times by 2. Times by 2. So the uh, each limit, right? So the domain stays and doesn't change on this uh, vertical stretch so it's going to be negative 16 negative 8 but like i said the range is the one that change and we have times 2 negative 15 times 2 negative 30 negative 4 times 2 negative 8 this is the one that change so if you want a kind of a rule let's say the range times 2. So this is very similar to what we did first on A, the reflection is multiplying by negative 1. So yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's the same idea. Let's go to the next one. The next one is what type of transformation? It's another non-rigid transformation. is what we call stretch horizontally. by a factor of 3. Okay, so you just flip that one over 3. And here, what does it change? The domain change, and in this case, you multiply by 3. So whenever you stretch, you multiply. Whenever you compress, you, you may have that change, you may have that case for both E and F. You divide or multiply by the reciprocal. So, uh, in this case, the domain will be what? Uh, negative 16 times 3 is um, uh, negative 48. And negative 8 times 3, negative 24. This is the domain here, which is nothing else multiplied by 3. The range stays. The range will be the same thing. So if you're on kind of a rule here, we multiply by 3D the range by the reciprocal of this number. Okay. 
G is the one that is the most complicated, right? We notice we have a bunch of transformation there. We have rigid transformation, x minus 1 inside of the parentheses, then we have a minus 2, and then we have some non-rigid transformation. So the question is, uh, how can I handle this? And this one, you, you may want to go step by step. And first of all, I'm going to look to this guy, which is 1 over 3, right? It's the same like F. So for that case, the domain will be multiplied by negative 3. So we have negative 48 and negative 24, right? So this is part F, right? But then we have something else. We have this minus 1. And that minus 1 is going to do what? It's going to move to the right. So that guy becomes, I'm going to do something like this. To the right, add 1, add 1, negative 47, right? I'm going to put here a plus 1. And another plus 1 here, negative 23. So that's one, the second thing that happens. And this is the final thing for the domain in our case right so we have the domain here which suffer two things first of all is multiplied by that uh, uh, factor of uh, 3 given by 1 over 3 and then move 1 to the uh, right now let's take a look to the range because the range also will be affected here right so let's take a look uh, the range if you remember we start from this guy right from negative 15 and uh, negative 4. Those are the limits for that interval. So now we notice here and we have this uh, 1 half. Okay, so what's going to happen here with the range? You have to divide by 2. And yeah, this is not going to look nice. We're going to have negative 15 divided by 2 comma negative 4 divided by 2 negative 2 that is the range for that one half okay but then we notice also we have these negative here so do you remember what's happened uh, that new range is gonna switch now and it's gonna be what it's gonna be positive 2 right negative 2 here times negative 1 like we did in part a right and negative 15 over 2 times negative 1 negative 15 over 2 right so this is the new range after that negative we have in front of a one half but also then we have a minus 2 right we have this minus 2 here which is going to give us a last thing for the range we're going to have to subtract 2 so we have 2 minus 2 that will be 0 and 15 over 2 minus 2, which I will be, say 4 over 2, will, will be 11 over 2. So this is the final answer for this part uh, G. So this function P of X is defined from negative 47 to negative 23. That's the domain. Two, zero, and eleven over two. Okay, let me let me rewrite that eleven because it looks like a pi. Okay, and and that's it. And I said this one is an example, but it looks more more for me like a mini lesson about how the domain and the range can change depending on the type of transformation you have. Okay, if you enjoyed this mini lesson, uh, don't forget to click the like button and come back at C Square for more help. Thank you.